here. So the red light's on. This is the go time. This is when all the pressure starts to happen. So I always ask my, uh, my guests uh, this first question. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Oh, man, I had a smoothie, uh, like okay. uh, with lots of fruits and uh, uh, almond milk, um, some protein. That's what nice. I usually nice. have in the morning. <laughs> nice. Sounds tasty. Uh, what, was, what was the main fruit component this morning? Uh, we had some papaya, banana, I think some berries, um, some greens too. I mean, we mix them all, right? Yeah, that sounds tasty. That sounds like a nice yeah. smoothie. Awesome, awesome. Well, I think we're sounding good here. So why don't we kick it in? Uh, why don't you uh, tell my listeners who you are and uh, what you're raising money for over on Kickstarter? Sure. Okay. Yeah, my name is Sergio Lando. I uh, I am actually, you know, seasoned guy, as you can <laughs> see. I, I, I've been around... Uh, uh, professionally for over 40 years. And, and most of it, the great majority, like 34 years, was in the bio, uh, biotech, biomedical uh, business. I am a mechanical engineer, so I was involved in the medical devices, not in actually chemistry or biology. Uh, but that's my background. Uh, um, you know, a lot of uh, uh, manufacturing parts, and, and uh, that's what I spend most of my professional life. And um, a few years ago, decided to leave that uh, 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 area. Um, it, it is very regulated, so mm -hmm. you have to abide to the forms. And, and the projects uh, take too long to mature, you know, like right. you know, five, six years. So I wanted to do something fun. I, I did something, invented a little skateboard, a longboard, and kind of put in the market. But it was a small business. And I always love uh, coffee, espresso. I'm, I'm mm. from Brazil, so I grew up with coffee. When mm. I used to say people are surprised by that, at that time, at least in the 50s, when I was a little kid, a five-year-old will drink uh, coffee and milk in the morning, every morning, right? Wow. <laughs> so it was... Um, and uh, so that I grew up with that taste and uh, I love espresso. So I decided to make a, a, an espresso machine for myself. So it picked up from there. I can give you details. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so for our listeners, sort of what makes the Neo special and like, like kind of walk us through for the people who, who can't see it or haven't been to the page yet, you know, what does it look like and, and, and what does it do? Sure. So uh, we, we first started, we had a, a previous Kickstarter like three, three and a half years ago. It was a, uh, late 2016, November 2016, mm -hmm. where I actually launched uh, our business and our, our first uh, product, which was the Flare Espresso Classic. The difference now between the new and the products that we've been selling is that the new has a flow control uh, portafilter. Uh, mm -hmm. Portafilter is that uh, component that holds the, the ground coffee uh, to be pressed in by, with hot water. And, and uh, usually espresso are made in porta filters that uh, the uh, the coffee itself the the, the grounds uh, are the the strainer that will provide the necessary pressure to uh, to extract that the motion that creates the the flavor and the crema. In case of the neo, um, because it uh, to do that it requires. Um, Kind of expensive grinders, right? Uh, right? I mean, you need to, in order to grind uh, fine for espresso, you need the grinders that are certainly above a hundred bucks. Um, there have to be burr grinders. So uh, a lot of our uh, users, um, you know, don't have that budget, uh, bought the machine and cannot make espresso. So we came up with this product that you can extract espresso uh with uh, with any grinder even a blade grinder so you just mm -hmm. grind the coffee you need to grind the beans but it doesn't matter how and uh, you put it there the porta filter will control the flow to create that enough pressure to extract the the flavors from from the uh, the grounds that's awesome so so in terms of this product where was sort of the starting point like what what were you like how long ago did you start putting together this idea yeah, the, uh, you're talking about the new, right? The, yep, the new one, yep. The, 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 the one that is in Kickstarter. Yeah, that was uh, a few months ago. Um, we had already the technology to make the, those manual. Our products are all uh, hand uh, mm -hmm. lever, right? Uh, right. They, they don't connect to electricity. Um, so we cater to, to those folks that uh, enjoy uh, doing that. <laughs> uh, it's not that it's fastest way. 
uh, there, are, there are those machines you press a button and, and, and you have <laughs> something espresso-like, I would say. Um, so uh, we decided to use that platform and bring in the people that didn't have the, uh, those more, um, you know, better uh, grinders, right? Mm -hmm. um, they were making coffee. I mean, there are a lot of uh, our um, uh, users that have the, uh, the original uh, uh, flair they make coffee with them, but not espresso. So that was the idea. This was a few months ago. We had to develop uh, around it. And uh, we made also a special uh, platform. The press stand is a, is a little different. But it does allow uh, uh, one that buys the, this product, new to upgrade and have the regular bottomless uh, mm. porta filter if they later decide to buy uh, a, a good grinder. No, that's cool. Very, very cool. So how many stages of, of like prototypes do you have to go through to get to something that's ready to be shown on Kickstarter? Sure. Yeah, Jeff, th this was easier for us because we had the base uh, product already. Right. It was not my first one. But yet we had to, uh, I'd say we did uh, like three or four runs of uh, prototypes mm -hmm. of the the, the most challenging in this project was to get the relationship between the the tiny orifice. There is two mm. levels of uh, some would call this double wall porta filter. So there's the 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 uh, the strainer. The, uh, the it's called basket. that has a bunch of little holes, very small holes, mm. right. to allow the water comes in, but not the grime. Right. So we had to have the the right relationship between that basket and the actual exit port that uh, that provides the uh, you know the flow control yeah. so if you don't get the, uh, that right it runs too fast it doesn't create the, the enough pressure if you get it um uh, uh too small uh then it will constrain restrict too much it will require a lot of force <laughs> and maybe nothing will come out right right wow man that's that's a uh, yeah i didn't think about that little th those little details so you know, so when you're going through that process, what is the thing that's like, and maybe you just mentioned, is that the thing that's keeping you up at night? Did that process, right? And <laughs> what you're describing, is that the thing that's, uh, that's the challenge? Yeah, exactly. In, in this project, that was the, uh, the toughest. Um, we had to do a lot of, and we are talking here about uh, like uh, differences of 100 of a millimeter, which, which gets to, to a, a couple of thousands uh, inches. So it's very minute difference will cause that relationship to change. So that uh, had a lot of a trial and error and, and even manufacturing, we, we had to get it right. There is a yeah. tolerance between those orifices. I mean, we hope we did get right. We, you know, we made a bunch of uh, prototypes and uh, uh, like a, a first small run mm -hmm. and uh, that's the one we made the video and we have around a few reviewers. Uh, so, so that was the centerpiece to be developed uh, on this product, right? Gotcha. Uh, but, but even the press stand is different. You know, that whole thing that has mm -hmm. the lever, the lever assembly. Um, so we designed that around it too. It's, uh, now, in, in a project like this, um, are you guys putting together sort of like a buyer persona of who you think this user is, um, you know, because it's, it doesn't seem like it's, it's not like the, it's not like the tech gadget guy, right. Who has to have the buttons and the, the, I want an app to my phone and it, you know, it's not, right. it's not that guy. So how do you guys sort of put together in your mind who this buyer is? Cause I think that's important for startup companies to be, you know, to be thinking yeah. about who's buying this thing, you know? A absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We had a, a, a pretty good idea because of our, a, a previous relation, I mean, ongoing business that we have mm -hmm. with the other product. It, it's basically male. Uh, our, uh, I, would, I would say, our typical, let's say, typical uh, uh, buyer for this product in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, male, uh, I, I would say, uh, it, it may be a guess at this point, but over seventy percent uh, uh, of the people that buy are female, as opposed uh, male as opposed to female. Uh, young guys. Um, I'd say from early 20s to, you know, no more than mid 40s and 40. And uh, people that appreciate mechanics, uh, hand uh, handmade stuff. 
people that are environmental, that are concerned with uh, throwing away stuff every day, you know, yeah. so there are no pods, no, there is no uh, uh, impact for the environment other than the coffee ground that is spent, you know, that's, right. uh, you, you can't go around that. You need only that and water. That's it. You don't need anything. You use your own force or you use human power. So that is attractive to, is attractive to people that are into uh, trying to uh, uh, conserve. And um, uh, also particular this product is the people that, um, you know, uh, budget. They don't want to spend two, three hundred dollars in a product. So this is, is around a hundred. Uh, Kickstarter is below a hundred. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, brings in the people that even novice, completely novice in making espresso at home, they don't even have to have a grinder. Well, I, I should say they need a grinder, but it can be a 10, ten buck uh, grinder, right? right? right, right one right. of those blades, you know? Yeah. So, so that was the profile of uh, people that I, I think will jump in. Uh, gotcha, this gotcha. And, and, and where in this process of, of you guys launching products, I mean, this is the second Kickstarter, but where do you guys start to think about, we want to go to Kickstarter to launch this as opposed to just maybe putting this product on, you know, your own web store right now and, and selling it? Yeah, we, we wanted to have a feel of, uh, of uh, demand. And also we, we didn't have the, the product. They particular, the, the uh, uh, flow control porta filter was uh, under development, right? So, um, that idea popped out. Uh, I mean, we had done one Kickstarter before. It was actually when the company was very small, basically myself, <laughs> right? One man operation. And uh, uh, my son helped me at that time. Uh, and um, uh, it was fairly successful. We raised uh, $58,000. Uh, our goal at that time was $45,000. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was a kind of a nail uh, biting <laughs> <laughs> campaign, you know, um, until the last three days, I'd say for, I can't remember exactly, but I think we hit the, the, the goal uh, between five and four, three days uh, yeah. to, for the campaign to close. Uh, this time we decided to come with a, a low uh, a goal, not to go to be an impediment, but we said, well, let's bring in people to, so we really can launch this product, invest in it. And uh, it was tremendously successful at, at comparing to the goal, I right. guess, uh, uh, unquestionably. But, but even it is a great campaign. We are hitting 200,000. And yep. um, that, that's really amazing, uh, you know, for a small company and a, a product like this. This is not a, a, like a mass product, right? Right, so, mm -hmm. right, right. So, um, so in that process, are there things that you're – thinking about that you want to make sure are being shown inside the Kickstarter in terms of the content? Um, like, like how are you starting to put together that narrative? Cause now that you know who that buyer is, um, I, I want the, I want visually to look like this. I want this to happen. How are you starting to think about that? Um, when you're getting ready to build out the, the, the campaign? Sure. Yeah. We, uh, regarding specifics, we have a very small, we're, we're a small company. So mm -hmm. total of uh, nine people. Okay. So, um, we uh, we have like three people involved in, in sales, um, sales and marketing. And uh, regarding the specific, I'm mean, putting the video together. They they actually did it all. Um, uh, I uh, I was uh, I had a hundred percent confidence uh, that we were going in the direct uh, direction. They have um, quite a good experience. There's one. Uh, um, that uh, a part of uh, part of our team that is uh, is uh, really uh, an espresso connoisseur, and uh, he <laughs> loves espresso for, way before the company exists, yeah. and, like, for twenty years, and and he knows everything about it. So we uh, we were pretty confident that we will come out with something that is appealing and very honest, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we we're not uh, claiming any snake oil here. Right, right. It's, it's something we, we claim exactly what the product offers. We know it, it, it offers because we had that background experience. And uh, I was uh, very pleased with the final result. I basically watched the video was well, almost done, you know, it was a mm -hmm. rough cut. And um, uh, that that was irrational. Also aiming uh, that uh, the sliver of uh, population that I mentioned to you, you know, more to males and and mm -hmm. to uh, uh, young people, young folks that like uh, to protect the environment. So for a, for a small business like yourself, 
what is it that you're looking for in terms of putting together like a team to, to help you? Um, Cause obviously you sounds like you've grown from the first campaign to this campaign, but what are you looking for in terms of team members and, and sort of, you know, maybe filling in the gaps around you to make sure that you have the right people in place. I think it's, it's challenging for a lot of startups to, to sort of navigate those waters. Yeah, it is. Uh, and it is uh, also, I think the hardest is maybe is to have a structure that work, uh, individual uh, uh, talent uh, is is extremely important. Uh, uh, I, I, I'd say the main trait is people that really connect with the type of business and product that we sell, mm -hmm. the services that we provide. You know, there's a lot of uh, customer service uh, required uh, uh, with this type of um, uh, of business. Uh, it, it is a product that people will have questions, and um, that's every day, right? And we have right. a superb uh, customer service. Um, yeah. So, so I I had to connect people that had that that attraction and that feel that they are part of the team. They are building uh, the company together. I, I think we we got to that point uh, because we're small. You know, if we had two hundred people, I think <laughs> I bet it would be much harder, right? <laughs> yeah. um, but but, but uh, yeah, we're, we're happy with the team we have and. Uh, we may have to to grow from here um we work every day <laughs> there's a lot of work for everybody so <laughs> yeah. awesome well let's flip over to the actual kickstarter so you kind of mentioned it that this campaign is being very very successful you've got when we're talking about five days to go when i post this it'll you know you'll be towards the end of your campaign and yeah you're probably going to hit 200k you got over 1400 backers right now, which that's a lot of backers a lot, right. lot of <laughs> a lot of shipping is going to have to happen um right. so what 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 were some of the metrics that you were looking for before you launched? Was there, um, you know, were you trying to get email addresses from people? Were you trying to use your existing um, base of customers? What were you kind of looking for before you launched the campaign to make sure that it was going to be successful? Sure. Yeah. What actually, uh, it's hard to believe that, but we, we kind of eyeball that level of 1500 and that, would be, I mean, he said, well, look, if we can uh, sell over five, five, 600 units, uh, like five, 600 backers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, talking about that, you will be already awesome, you know, 1,000 even better, but 1,500 is, uh, we are not seeking in having a campaign to, to, uh, to have 10,000 backers, you know, right. said like a couple of million dollars. We, we never target because we, uh, there is an issue of uh, fulfillment, right? Right. We have to make the products put together. Like you say, we have to ship one by one. <laughs> it's not easy in a small organization to go and, you know, it, it's, it's much um, easier to send 200 to Amazon. We send, we put a, all them together, send the one time, then be shipping in a lot of uh, international uh, fulfillments, right? Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it is funny that we're kind of uh, hovering uh, around that number. So uh, yeah, that, that was uh, 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 pretty much what we had in, in mind. Um, and it is awesome that, uh, like you say, for us, we are, uh, you know, we can't thank enough the people that jump in in the beginning and, you know, we did a very a great run right in the first two, three days. And uh, and people that are still coming coming in, I, I nobody will be disappointed. I can guarantee you that I, it is a great product. They will have for years and years. Very simple, doesn't break. Um, you know, whatever happens, we also will help. We we're there to support. Um, so yeah, that that was uh, uh, the rational, you know, and the expectation. The metrics uh, we follow every day, uh, like uh, you know, we see, mm -hmm. uh, like you can imagine, right? <laughs> yeah. It's something important for us, uh, and um, um, you know, some days are better than others. Sure. I, we, we never uh, just to wrap up in terms of uh, of acquiring, uh, uh, basically acquiring um, uh, eyeballs. We never really thought about that. Uh, we, we had some help uh, from a group that uh, will do uh, some uh, uh, upsell after the campaign uh, mm -hmm. is done, will help us with the survey. But we don't have any, any marketing company backing us, uh, you know, over, overreaching, sending right. to you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. We, okay. we keep it simple. We do okay. some Facebook. So. Okay. 
Cool. Mm -hmm. What um what has been the biggest thing that stood out in this campaign? And has there been something that you were I don't know you mentioned international sales. Was it something that you guys were anticipating? Or I mean, what was the thing that's maybe stood out the biggest? Has it been a country that's supporting you a lot that yeah. you didn't expect? Uh, not in particular. I mean, it, it pretty much followed the profile of the first campaign we have, with one difference though. Uh, today, uh, compared to three years ago, there's a, a lot of more interest from Asian countries. Mm. Uh, a lot of Asian, Asian countries into espresso now, including China, right? Mm. Um, so, so there is more uh, a split uh, Asia and maybe Western Europe, Australia, at that time was, was very heavily in Australia, Canada, and uh, UK. One thing that stood out though, that is, is kind of negative, but uh, you know, I, I want to address here, is the, the fact that uh, shipping for us is very expensive. Yeah. We are not Amazon. We, we don't have the, you know, their clout to negotiate any shipping rates. So we have to send it by re reliable means that we know that uh, can be tracked and they will receive in a few days. And those are expensive for international, yeah. right? Yeah. So people are sometimes disappointed. Oh, but product uh, costs uh, less than a hundred bucks. I have to spend uh, almost 80 just to, to ship it, right? So right. that kind of stood out or something that we cannot really address differently, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, it's a big thing. Uh, I, can, I can speak from firsthand knowledge. We've killed a couple companies because of shipping because just shipping is a major, major headache uh, when you're doing global and you've got tariffs and all the other little stuff that could potentially pop up uh, and, and bite you on there. Um, so, you know, with this campaign, um, you know, what does this look, what does this campaign do for you um, in terms of launching other products, is it something that you can continue kind of seeing like we are always going to use Kickstarter to launch new products or is it like, hey, this one worked well, but we're going to move on and, and do other things. Do you, do you see how Kickstarter fits into all your product launches? Yeah, that, that's a great uh, question because it's something that we, we ask ourselves. Uh, I, I don't think that uh, either extremes will happen that all products that we, you know, we are able to launch, we'll do through Kickstarter. Actually, it's already not happening. We're gonna have a, our own grinder in a couple of, uh, of months in, in the summer. Uh, the flare grinder is called a Royal, and uh, that's not Kickstarter. We'll, right. we'll launch it directly on our website. Um, but on the other hand, it, Kickstarter is a, is a great platform to, uh, you know, to learn and to bring people and, and uh, understand exactly what the product can do and, and what are the concerns. Also, the, you know, the stuff that you have to address uh, sometimes. Uh, so this was a great experience. Uh, it was an idea that uh, as soon as it was uh, put out to me, I said, oh, well, yeah, let's do it. I think we have another product maybe coming up uh, later this, uh, this year that we probably will do a Kickstarter. Uh, so, so it, it, it is uh, depending on the product, uh, yeah. the situation. Um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, I'm, I'm very pleased the way Kickstarter does. It's, it's a great help for people also to, mm. you know, to get products for below <laughs> their costs, <laughs> right? Their retail price. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and we deliver. That, that we can't guarantee. I, whatever, I mean, we did it the first time. Let me tell you a, a real short uh, anecdotal story about the first campaign that, that – kind of uh, uh, highlights the importance of a Kickstarter. I launched that product, the first flare. There was no, uh, there isn't one item, it's called dispersion uh, screen that all espresso machines have. I was trying to do something so minimalist, so simple. I said, I'm not gonna do any screen. I can pull out uh, espresso without a screen. It, it didn't have a screen. Started the campaign several, maybe a week or two uh, down the campaign. I started to hear from the guys that are very into espresso. Hey, man, you <laughs> cannot sell a, an espresso machine without uh, the special screen. You need the special screen. I had to design it during the campaign to design it, to make something that will work. And then to show them to have a little video, right? Yeah, right. That, that was so, so I kind of introduced that item uh, during the campaign. Another item that was introduced, people hold the, uh, because this question came up. After you're done with the espresso, the, the cylinder is hot, right? You have mm -hmm. to remove it to replace the, uh, the porta filter. It's hot. So people suggest how you go, oh, we have a, a silicone pad. 
that was not enough. People will work, will lose. So someone suggested, why don't you have a sleeve around the cylinder? Mm -hmm. So I made a sleeve. So that was Kickstarter was great. Uh, this yeah. time around, there were no, not so much, uh, so many suggestions, but uh, we, we still learn a lot. So. Yeah, well, it's one of the benefits I try to tell uh, my own clients of like, the money's nice, all this stuff's nice, but you don't know the other things that may pop out of this. Right. by you putting out in the public and, and getting feedback and, and, and being open to receiving that feedback too. It's, it's a, it's a exactly. great win-win for everybody. So, um, yeah. So, so, you know, once this campaign ends, um, and you know, you wait for the money to all drop, what starts happening for you guys to get this product into people's hands? Well, we, uh, uh two things that need to, to happen. We have to, to go, go out and produce the, uh, the uh, the product we have the mold already, so we don't need to make any molds. Uh, mm -hmm. That stuff uh, takes time. We have to and mainly, like I, I told you, the the uh, flow control porta filter. Uh, the other stuff we are actually already making. We you know we have some uh, resources. Uh, we 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 don't depend on that money to go and make the press then. That allows us to uh, pretty pretty quick uh, turn around. Uh, we we're gonna do everything within 30 days, uh, mm -hmm. really. That, that's the focus, that, that's basically the commitment we had. Uh, you know, there may be hiccups that uh, we're uh, making this overseas, and uh, you know, there's some stuff that happened, but, but uh, he, he, he's not telling uh, uh, that right now. We are, right. we are uh, in a you know, good route to, uh, to get that done uh, and, and send them out. We need to crank them out uh, from here right? Mm -hmm. uh, package them. And <laughs> that's a lot of work, a lot yeah. of hand work. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. So, you know, for, for your company here, what does this sort of next year look like? Um, I mean, you've mentioned a little bit around other products. Um, is it uh, still focusing on, on the Neo a little bit more? Is it, you know, getting this in a big box retail? What, what, what does it just sort of look like in general for you guys? Yeah. I, you know, we have a, kind of a, I would say a big unknown, like a monkey wrench with this <laughs> situation with the, yeah, right. with the virus going around. That, that is such a disruption overall. Um, you know, we are learning from it too. Uh, basically, our business has been going very well because it's a product people can use at home mm -hmm. um, and, and order online. Uh, so that, that helped uh, if we had a product, for instance, say for coffee shops, uh, we will be in trouble, right? Yeah. So uh, uh, we, we, uh, we don't know how this is going to play out the next few months, but, but every indicator is that we are growing. We're growing pretty fast uh, that next year, this year will probably be much better than the year before, which we did uh, very good. And uh, 2021, we hope to be better. As, as regarding this product, I honestly, I think it's going to be a hit. Uh, mm. it, it's going to sell very well on Amazon. I mean, it goes back to regular retail price. And, mm -hmm. and uh, because it's so um, uh, like overreaching uh, people that don't need the, the, the nice grinder, um, simple to use, very simple to use. The instructions are on the box. I write, print the right <laughs> one, two, three, four. That's it. Right. So, uh, well, yeah, we are, we're hoping this to be a success, this new. That's good. And, and people that jump in, uh, you know, we can't thank them enough. I, I really admire that, uh, those guys. I, I am a conservative guy <laughs> in buying something that, oh, hasn't been made yet. And, you know, it, it depends on the personality. Those people really believe they're pioneers. They help uh, companies here in America uh, to grow, you know, small guys, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, we are really appreciated for everybody that back our project. Uh, we can't thank them that's enough. Great. Yeah, that's great. So <laughs> it's, and they're, they're, your in, they're your early adopters, your insiders. They're the people who are talking about it at a party. Like, hey, I just got this new thing. They're, they're super, super impactful for, for not only just this product, but other products down the road too, if they, if they, you know, felt like it was a good experience, they like it. And it also breeds confidence in the other crowdfunding campaigns out there in general too. Like if you're delivering and you're, you know, it was a good experience, more people will support other campaigns. So very, 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 very good job on that. So, so uh, I've been finished up my, uh, my episodes lately because we're all kind of locked inside with a sort of a lightning mm -hmm. round questions, right? Um, uh, not about uh, crowdfunding or any of this stuff. So if you're down with that, I can, uh, I can give you a couple quick questions. You ready for them? Sure. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, what are you watching on TV right now? On TV? 
uh, we watch, now I'm watching Tiger uh, King, you know, yeah. in, <laughs> nice. in terms of, uh, yeah, I, we watch the news and stuff like that. But uh, that, that's what I'm presently watch. I'm like, <laughs> and the fourth that results. Are you, are you going to, are you going to get a tiger? They're only $2,000. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's plenty of room of tigers here. I mean, and uh, they're free to roam here in California. You know Oh, that, cool. Right? Good, good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, how about, is there been a movie that you've watched lately at all? Oh, oh, that's a good question. I, I've been uh, watching movies on, the, on, on Netflix lately. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I watch uh, one. Uh, this is a foreign uh, movie that was the last one. The Unfortunate Man is a okay. Danish uh, movie, uh, yeah. uh, movie, and um, it was quite interesting. Uh, yeah, that, that was the last one. Okay, okay. How about, are you reading any books right now? Not right now. I'm, I'm so busy with, uh, with this thing. My, you know, to be honest with you, this becomes like, it's like uh, maybe uh, having uh, uh, twins at home. You know, yeah. you, you, you're busy all the time, right? Right, so, right, 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 right. Um, how, about, uh, how about podcast episodes? You listen to any podcast episodes? Besides mine, I, uh, obviously. I mean, you listen yeah, to mine all the time, but I, I, how about other ones? Yeah. It, well, I listen to TED Talk uh, quite often. Uh, um, the, the, the 538 folks, you know, that uh, mm -hmm. it's more like a political spin. Yep. Uh, yep. Are, mm -hmm. That's a good one. I, I, I do some 538 in my life too. Uh, how about, mm -hmm. uh, how about last one? Is there any websites that you could recommend uh, to sort of help navigate this digital marketing stuff? Is there anything that you're reading kind of consistently that other people should be, uh, should be checking out? Oh, there, nothing that comes to my mind, a website or, um, no, I, like I said, I, uh, uh, we have someone in the company that is very into uh, this whole business of, uh, of coffee. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure it would pop in, in his mind uh, like three or four names. <laughs> uh, from, you know, I, I really don't. Sorry, I have to pass that. No, no worries, no worries, no worries. All right, so well, where can people dive in? Where can people learn more? Where, where, where should we send people outside of the Kickstarter? Well, uh, it, it is our website. Uh, flareespresso.com so the, the our brand is flare f l a a i r the word espresso.com uh, so we have a pretty uh, comprehensive uh, website that uh, with a lot of uh, content uh, in terms of how to use the products and and videos the demos um, and of course we have a great uh, customer service yeah, anybody that wants to learn anything about our product including the new right now service at flareespresso.com. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Sergio, I appreciate you taking time out of your day. I know you're busy. You got a campaign that's finishing up here and uh, you got to get back to watching Tiger King. I mean, that's, that's, that's uh, a great no, not, no, right <laughs> not right now. Hey, Jeff, I, I appreciate your time too. It was yeah. great. Uh, good interview. I, I, you know, not usually happen with me. So uh, thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> No, no problem. I, well, thank you for giving uh, time for our listeners. I, uh, I always love talking to project creators, talking about what they're doing, what they're working on. And, uh, uh, and I hope other people can take this and, and, and go with it and, and have their own successful campaign. So Sergio, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I, I look forward to watching your campaign from, uh, from, from my end. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. And uh, get in touch with uh, me later on. Okay. Will do, man. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. We make you uh, uh, an espresso aficionado, okay? Ah, uh, yeah. I could be a, I could be a little micro influencer. Look at that, me. That's right. My espresso. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, my friend. Bye Thank bye you now. so much. Bye now.